guys, yes, yes, que Carlos Tata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to teach you how to make Greek keftedes. These are the best meatballs that you will ever make. You might have already made them if you've been following me for a while because this is the same recipe that I've used since day one. A long time ago I taught you how to make these pan fried, which is the, which is the traditional method of making meatballs. We generally pan fry them. But recently I've started meal prepping and just trying different recipes and different ways of doing things. So I have been broiling them and they have been coming out delicious. They're healthier, they're lighter, and no mess, no splatter to clean up. Let's get started. So I'm using my food processor and to it I'm going to add four cloves of garlic and I'm just going to pulse them until they're very finely chopped. They're going to continue to chop with the onion. So I have one onion over here and you want to get a bigger onion, not a small one because we're using two pounds of ground beef. So cut it into quarters and put it in the food processor. And pulse until it's finely chopped. And this is what they should look like, the onion and the garlic. You don't want them to be pureed where they start to release the, their juices. So I have two pounds of ground beef. It's 80% lean and 20% fat. I'm going to add the onion and the garlic to the bowl. And then I have a big bunch of fresh parsley that I've just rinsed really well. And then I set it in the drainer to drain all the, most of the excess water. I'm going to cut off the, the, the thicker part of the stems. And I'm not going to worry about these thin ones over here. I'll break it into one more piece. So we have two pieces in the food processor it goes. And I'm going to pulse that until everything is finely chopped. And that's what they look like. And go ahead and add the chopped parsley to the bowl. Then I have one and a half cups of panko breadcrumbs. You could use any unseasoned breadcrumbs that you like. Some crushed red pepper flakes for heat. Two teaspoons of dried oregano. Some ground black pepper. Two teaspoons of salt. You can add a little bit more salt because the panko breadcrumbs do need it. Then I have two eggs. I'm just going to go ahead and beat them. You could do it right here inside the side of the bowl or if you want to you can do it in a separate little bowl and then add it in. And then we have a cup of whole milk. Now we're just going to mix everything all together. And that's it. The meat mixture is ready. Now we're going to form them into meatballs. So you can make this mixture a day ahead of time and just keep it in your refrigerator so all of the flavors can marry. I never do that because there's so much flavor in this and I really like to meal prep. So I don't want to add an extra day to my meal prepping. I usually make big batches of this and then I form them into meatballs and I freeze them and use them throughout the week and sometimes I have them a month in my freezer and I get so happy to find them in there when I'm when I'm short on time and I need to put a meal on the table. These are delicious and they can be turned into so many different things, so many different meals. But I do want to say a few things. The breadcrumbs and the milk combination with the eggs makes these super juicy and light and moist. So you don't want to leave it out. However, if you want to make these gluten free, you can definitely add a mashed potato to this, maybe one or two small mashed potatoes, boil it, mash it, put a little bit of salt in it so that way everything is seasoned well and then add it instead of the breadcrumbs and that should work. I know some of you like to use gluten free um, breadcrumbs and those will work as well. I've never tried it so I'm really not sure what the consistency will be but if you have let us know in the comments so everyone else who's interested in trying that out will know what to expect and how much to use if it's the same one to one ratio or not. Make sure you don't leave the herbs out. Everything in here is an important ingredient. 
The only thing that I've left out that was in my original recipe is Parmesan cheese. You can go ahead and add three quarters to a cup of Parmesan cheese to the mixture. It is going to add another layer of flavor and make them more savory and salty. And then you can cut back on the salt. I added about half a teaspoon of extra salt than the recipe calls for because of the breadcrumbs, because the breadcrumbs are unseasoned. And that's also very important that the breadcrumbs you use are unseasoned so that way all of the flavors that you're adding are exactly the right ones, okay? Basically that's it. Now we're gonna move on to forming the meatballs, which is super easy. We're gonna make, I like to make them golf ball size. I feel like that is a nice size to serve and it goes well with many different meals. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start um, forming these and putting these on these baking trays right here. So I have two baking trays because this makes about 60 meatballs and you just make the meatballs simple. Just like that. They roll up very easily with just a few little turns in your palm. So then once the meatballs are rolled and on the trays, you can do a few things. You can cook them right away, or if you're meal prepping and you made extra, or you're just meal prepping in general, you can take the trays and pop them in the freezer and let them sit in the freezer for an hour, maybe two hours, until they're frozen solid. And then what you wanna do is take them and transfer them into a freezer safe container or freezer bags that where they'll last for about two to three months in there. They've never lasted that long in this house, you guys, because everyone loves these. But if you do meal prep, that's a good thing to do because you can make so many things out of these. You can make, obviously, spaghetti and meatballs. You can make my meatball saganaki. You can just pan fry them and serve them as an appetizer with some tzatziki, which is what we're going to do later on. Or you, can or you can take them to work and eat them over a salad, rice. The options are endless, and I'm going to write most of them on the blog post, so make sure you head on over to the website and you read that after the video. But what we're going to do now, because I am going to bake both trays, because these will last probably 15 minutes once all the kids get home, I'm going to brush the tops with olive oil, and then the oven is preheated to the broil setting. So the broiler is on the top of the oven. What you want to do is take one of the oven racks and put it on the highest uh, part of the oven, wherever it can sit closest to the um, broiler element, and you're going to broil one tray at a time time for about 12 minutes. That's usually how long it takes. You don't have to turn the sides. You don't have to do anything. Just one tray at a time, about 12 minutes. But again, every oven varies. So once they're golden brown on top and they're fully cooked, that's how you know they're done. It takes between 12, max 15 minutes. Don't overcook them. Otherwise, they're going to dry up. I'll show you what they look like. I'll show you what they look like as soon as they're done. All right, so the broiled keftedes are ready and the house smells spectacular. A few are already missing, <laughs> but it is time for the taste test. But before we do that, I want to tell you exactly how long they took. So each tray took about 13 minutes. So again, your every oven varies, so don't look at that. You want them to be golden the way they look right now, right here on the trays. And then, of course, you want them to be cooked through. It does take about 12 minutes for them to be fully cooked through and maybe a minute more for, the, for them to be golden. Let me know how long it takes your oven to cook in the comment section down below. So it is time for the taste test because I can no longer wait. So I'm going to take this one right here and look at it. Just look at how juicy it is. It is still very moist on the inside. So it's definitely going to be juicy. I'm going to put a little spoonful of tzatziki in the center and I'm making a, a burger tzatziki sandwich. Have you ever had such a delicious confection? Mmm. <laughs> so delicious flavorful, juicy, moist, light. Have you ever had those meatballs that are really hard when you bite into them and almost kind of like sometimes they're spongy? Well, these are not like that. These are light and just so good. You guys are going to have to give them a try. The recipe, you can print it out on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. The exact measurements are in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. If you want to learn some recipes to use uh, these meatballs in, Click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, yes.